When it comes to wedding photography, choosing the right lens is really important. You want it small and light enough that it fits in your bag, but you also want to get one that's got a nice bright aperture and also one that's good for image quality. So today I thought I'd share with you my top five lenses for wedding photographers. And I'm gonna start right now. Now, just before we get started talking about what lens you should buy for what reason, I just want to state that I shoot on Canon. I shoot on a Canon EOS R5 and a Canon EOS R. So most of the lenses we're going to be talking about today are going to be in the Canon ecosystem. Now, also, I don't actually own any mirrorless lenses at the moment, simply because how expensive they are. And a lot of my lenses are secondhand. And at the moment, you can't necessarily get a lot of mirrorless secondhand lenses. So a lot of my lenses today, or the ones that we're going to be talking about, are all DSLR lenses that I have adapted using the EF to RF adapted to either my Canon EOS R5 or R. So if you're looking for slightly cheap alternatives to what Canon suggests you buy, those mirrorless lenses, then this is the video for you. So the first lens on my list and by far the one that I use the most for weddings is this. This is the Sigma 35mm F1.4 Art. And this is the EF version as you can imagine, Sigma don't currently have an RF version, but when they do, the likelihood I'll buy it. Now, I love 35mm focal length, especially for weddings. It's an incredibly versatile focal length, I found. It's great for portraits, environmental portraits. It's great for the ceremony, speeches, genuinely great for everything. Now, this is definitely one of the lenses that I use the most simply because of its nice bright aperture of f1.4. I like this for two reasons. Firstly, it offers a nice shallow depth of field, but it's also really good in low light. So again, as you can imagine, some weddings are shot very dark, maybe they're in a church and there isn't great lighting, or even let's say we're shooting near sunset. This lens is going to stand above the rest, especially when it comes to zoom lenses, because that nice bright aperture. Now, when it comes to weddings, I like shooting between f2 to 2.8. I find that's the, the the nicest aperture to offer the nicest depth of field while also still offering a fairly bright aperture because obviously the problem you want is you can step down uh, but then you end up having ISO problems boosting your ISO and just to have an acceptable shutter speed. So having a nice bright aperture is really important, which is why I really like this 35mm. It doesn't have to be the Sigma, Canon do do a version, but again, like I was saying price point, the Sigma is way better value for money. If you're interested in the difference between the Sigma and the Canon, I'll put a video on my channel discussing that very topic. Now the next lens on my list is probably my second most used lens and I actually use it in partnership with the 35mm. That is this. This is the Canon EF 85mm f1.4 IS. Now I shoot luckily on two bodies and that's why it lets me kind of use prime lenses more than traditional zoom lenses. And my two favourite focal lengths for wedding is my 35mm as previously mentioned but then an 85mm and this is the one that I've decided to choose. Now I really like having the consistency of having most of my lenses at f1.4. It means when I'm shooting between f2 to 2.8 I'm getting this roughly the similar sharpness. Now the reason I like the Canon lens over over the traditional Sigma lens, which is probably what you would expect me to own, is because of the size. I actually really like the size of this Canon. It's a lot smaller than the Sigma. The actual air filter thread of this is only 77 millimeters, where the filter thread on the Sigma is 86 millimeters, which is genuinely huge. So having a smaller, lighter lens while still offering the same aperture and the big bonus of image stabilization, this is a really good lens to own. Again, I'd love to own the RF 85mm f1.2, but I don't have three and a half thousand pounds to spend on a lens. In fact, I brought this second hand for about a thousand pounds. So in my opinion, a really good purchase. And again, like I was saying, it works really well with that 35 mil focal length. 35 and 85, both together, especially if you're shooting on two different bodies, highly recommend it. You can get nice tight shots as well as nice environmental portraits with just two simple focal lengths. So if you could choose out of any of them, I highly recommend a 35 mil and an 85 mil. <music> 
Now the next lens I would recommend is a lens I've actually recently purchased and I fell in love with it when I brought it. That is this, the Sigma 24mm f1.4 Art. Now I really like the Sigma as previously mentioned and this is very similar to this. It's slightly wider which gives you a few benefits over the 35mm. Now yes I love 35mm but 24mm is also very nice. Now the reason for that, let's say you've got a slightly bigger group, you don't have to be so far back or maybe let's say you're in a tighter venue, this allows you to get a little bit closer than you traditionally work with a 35mm. Plus it lets you show off the venue a little bit more, it lets you kind of let you breathe a little bit with the image. You have to think a little bit more about your composition, again the wider you go the more kind of thought process you have to put into it, but I really think this is a definite purchase. Not the first lens necessarily you need to buy, but once you've got that 35mm and you're established with it, a 24mm will definitely go a long way, which is why I recommend the Sigma 24mm. But of course, Canon also do a 24mm, so if you want to know the difference between the two, again, I've got a video discussing that very topic. Now, I love prime lenses for the main reason of their aperture. Offering a nice bright aperture, I think is really important for wedding photography, but it doesn't mean you don't have to use zoom lenses. In fact, this is my next lens I'm gonna be talking about, the Canon EF 70 to 200 mm f 2.8. Now, this is the only lens I own that's a zoom lens. Now, I've got nothing against zoom lenses, but again, even the best zoom lens realistically only has an aperture around f2.8, which in some situations is fine. But in most situations, especially darker, you're gonna have to shoot higher ISOs, which is why I always recommend prime lenses. But this is really the only exception. The reason is, Basically, it's versatility. 70 to 200 mil is great, especially let's say you're a second shooter starting out. This is probably the first lens I would actually buy for the main reason of you can get distance. All other lenses, if you want to, let's say, change the focal length or change your composition, you're gonna have to walk forward or walk backwards. But in a tight venue, you won't have that ability. Or if you're a second shooter, you've got loads of people in front of you and right at the back of the church, you're not gonna be able to get forward. That's what the prime shooter is all for. So that is why having this could be really helpful. A 70 mil is a fairly wide angle. It's not the widest angle, grant you, but it's decent. And 200 mil is really tight. So you can have these nice tight shots and snipe from the other side of the room and you can get the shot with this lens. Let's say you wanna get the first kiss, bang, this lens is gonna be perfect for you. The only disadvantage really is its weight, it is heavy. I think it's just over a kilogram where all of my other lenses are far lighter. So it's definitely not the lightest lens in the world, but it definitely will help you out if you need to get a little bit of extra reach. Now, there are a few prime lenses that have got the same focal length, like a lot of people I know shoot on 135 mil, but the problem I've got with that focal length, it's very restricting. So a nice versatile zoom lens can definitely go a long way for wedding photography. And the last lens on my list is a lens you're not necessarily going to need straight away, but it's definitely handy to have. And that's this. This is the Canon EF 100mm f2.8 macro. Now, the main reason I brought this is its macro ability. Being really close to your subject and getting really sharp images is really important in some situations. Now, like I was saying, it's not necessarily essential for weddings, but it can make you stand out for a variety of reasons. Firstly, 100 mils a nice focal length. It's good for portraits, it's good for macro shots, it's kind of good for everything. The other ability though is obviously its macro ability, which is the more important reason. Now this lets you get really close to your subject and lets you focus on the finer details of a wedding. Now some bride and grooms focus on the real fine details. The wedding rings, for example, is a great example of what you wanna photograph. Let's say you wanna be kind of creative, maybe drop your wedding ring into some champagne. You can do that with this lens versus other lenses. Now, like I was saying, you don't necessarily need it straight away. It's one of those nice to have, I would say, but if you are after a macro lens, I highly recommend this one. So if you wanna focus on the details and be a little bit more creative with your work, a 100 mil can definitely go a long way. And I recommend this macro lens. The RF1, again, really nice, but again, far too expensive. Again, I brought this second hand and I absolutely fell in love with it when I brought it. Brilliant, and there we go, guys. There are my five recommended lenses that I use for wedding photography. Of course, 
I own a lot more lenses, but these are the five that I usually have with me. The two I highly recommend is the 35mm and the 85mm, but once you've splashed out on those two, maybe you can get a 24 to 70 mil or maybe a 15 to 35 mil or maybe a macro lens. Write it down in the comments below what you shoot and do you agree or disagree with my verdict? I love these lenses, but I would love to hear your feedback. You never know, I might chip in one of these lenses because of your recommendation. So write it down in the comments below. I've been James for Photo Fever and I'll catch you guys next time.